in France is known to be one of the most haunted museums of the world. Probably because it houses some of the greatest and darkest paintings of the world. I'm your host Melissa Malati and here are your top 10 haunted art pieces hanging inside the Louvre. In our number 10 spot, we have the Master of the Rebel Angels. This painting was painted by an anonymous artist in the second quarter of the 14th century. This painting is a depiction of falling angels and the rebellion of Lucifer, aka Satan himself. So yeah, it definitely has haunted vibes. Even though it is painted over a vibrant yellow backdrop, the angels and the demons in black truly make you feel uneasy. Easy to look at it. It looks like the demons are flying after the falling angels, and Lord knows what the artist thought that the demons would do with these angels once they caught up with them. Probably eat them. <laughs> the bottom of the painting depicts a sphere, which we can only imagine is probably the world, so we can guess that the angels and the demons are falling onto Earth. Apparently, this painting was very popular to debate about in the Middle Ages, probably because some thought it to be haunting and real. In our number 9 spot we have Jailbreak Saint Rhaenyras. Jailbreak Saint Rhaenyras, painted by famous medieval artist Il Sassetta, who was alive between 1392 to 1450. There is much speculation over whether this painting is scary or not, and um, I just have to say heck yes it is. Just look at it. On the left side you see a bunch of people running away, which we can only assume by the title are people from jail escaping. One guy is still trying to get out of the hole, trying to escape, but floating above him is definitely a demon-like man, possibly a ghost. He's putting out his hand as if he's about to put a spell on the person trying to escape, as he seems too far away to arrest him or anything else. In any case, what the heck was this painter thinking? We can definitely either conclude that he had quite the imagination and clearly would be a modern day scary movie enthusiast if alive today, or he witnessed this in real life, as it has a very strong energy that you usually feel in work that holds some truth. In any case, I think we can conclude that this painting may be haunted. It's definitely creepy. In our number 8 spot we have The Children of Edward by Paul Delaroche. This painting is haunting to me because of the history behind it. The people depicted in the painting appear afraid and huddled together. They are the two princes Edward V and the Duke of York that were possibly killed by their uncle Richard III, although there is much speculation over this. As the history goes, Richard III took the throne away from Edward V in 1480. And had him and his brother declared illegitimate. This is actually one of those historical mysteries that will probably never be solved, but the energy behind this painting that was made by Paul Delaroche in the early 1800s is what makes it chilling. Paul must have been a history buff. I bet you the spirits of these two princes haunt the painting today. In our number seven spot, we have St. Peter of Verona, St. Peter the Martyr. This is a painting done by Ambrogio Bergogone around 1494. At first glance, this is a painting of a guy who's wearing a cape beside a woman that's praying. This one could go over your head, like it did for me, unlike it did for this guy in the painting. If you zoom into his head, you will see a knife in his head. So, this looks like it was perhaps a pleasant moment, but then a knife is thrown at this man's head, and probably one second later, he crumbles to the ground dead. The background of this painting is bright and happy, and I feel like this painting symbolizes how you can at one moment be so happy and blissful, and just like that, something bad could happen and your day becomes dark. In fact, this is a painting of Saint Peter the Martyr, who was a fascinated for trying to convert people back to Catholicism. One minute everything seems fine, the next it wasn't. In our number 6 spot we have Saint Francis of Assisi receiving stigmata. This is a picture painted by Giotto di Bodone around the year 1295. Some may say beautiful, I say maybe a little dark. This painting feels dark to me. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it de definitely feels dark. Apparently it kinda is. Uh, Saint Francis of Assisi was receiving wounds or pain corresponding to the crucifixion wounds of Jesus Christ. Now the angel kinda 
kind of looks like Jesus, so perhaps Jesus himself is giving them to St. Francis, but in any case, some kind of angel or ghost is hurting him, and so therefore haunting him, and so this picture is a bit creepy and probably haunted. Like my conclusion? Hopefully you do. In our number five spot, we have the Nymph and Satyr. This painting is also known as Jupiter and Antia, painted by Jean-Antoine Watteau between 1714 to 1719. So when looking at this girl, you think, okay, she's peaceful, sleeping soundly, and then you look at the man and he literally looks like the devil, so you immediately feel uneasy. It's because this painting was supposed to depict a woman who was seduced by a satyr in the form of what she thought was Zeus. So she was tricked. And when she awakes, she will feel gross and foolish. And the energy of the scene that is about to play out is haunting and triggering <laughs> as a girl. But also the satyr's face is truly quite scary. So this painting is definitely haunted with low vibes. In our number four spot, we have the Sabine woman. Look, YouTube is strict with what you can and can't say on here. So the title of this painting has to be changed so that we don't get, you know, dinged. I want you to add the letter R in front of the word ape, and then you should have the ape of the Sabine woman. This was painted by Nicholas Poisson between the years 1637 and 1638. The very name of this painting is chilling, especially when you look at the picture and see all of the women clearly trying to escape. The men have this sort of evil, joyous look on their face that could haunt any girl's dream. This painting just has weird vibes, and if it is not actually haunted by all the mistreated women throughout time and is definitely haunted with the energy of their sorrows. In our number three spot, we have David with the head of Goliath. David with the head of Goliath is a painting that was painted by Guido Reni in 1606. This painting is based off of the very epic tale of David and Goliath, a tale of a man becoming a prince and beheading a giant. A classic tale of the strength of what appears to be a not so strong male defeating what appears to be a very strong giant. So yeah, even though the tale isn't really that scary, it does doesn't make the painting any less creepy. It's a man holding a giant's head, or just, you know, a person holding a head in general is creepy. Side thought though, are we really to believe that a pretty skinny man like this one with no chest muscles defeated this big giant? Come on. <laughs> he either had wit and brains coming out of his arse and tricked the giant, or the painter himself was skinny and fancied the idea of defeating something that he most likely wouldn't defeat without the help of someone with muscle. People have agreed online that regardless of the story, the beheaded head is creepy. Do we think it's haunting to look at? I'm undecided. Would love your thoughts in the comment section. Below. In our number two spot, we have The Death of Sardanapalus. This is a painting done by Eugene Delacroix between 1827 and 1844. This is a painting that was made to tell the real life story of Sardanapalus. Apparently, the painting depicts a pretty merciless man who's lying on his bed with his jewels overlooking a scene of chaos. We have an undressed woman being hurt in the back by another male. We have many lying on the bed looking dead and just faces that show anger and pain. The energy of this painting is just low. You can feel the suffering through the painting and it gives me shivers. This is one of the Louvre's most controversial paintings for how dark it is. I mean, the Louvre has quite a lot of dark paintings, so I find that to be interesting, but in any case, it feels haunted, so we're gonna go with that. In our number one spot, we have Dante and Virgil in hell. I mean, if there was going to be any painting that I was going to say that is most likely to be haunted, it was definitely going to be the one that depicts creatures coming out from the fiery pits of hell. This was yet another painting done by Eugene Delacroix in the year 1822. The painting was inspired by the famous Italian poet Dante, and more specifically inspired by his piece Divine Comedy. The painting shows two men crossing a river and being tormented by the souls of the dead, or to be more precise, the souls from hell. In the far bottom left of the painting, you will see what looks like a demon just staring at you. I'm convinced that a demon just hides in this painting and forever stares at everyone through it because it is truly creepy to look at. On second thought, it could be looking at the body in front of it, or it could be looking at you because the eyes are white, so it's kind of hard to know. Then there's another demon in the middle back that is clearly staring straight at you and cursing 
cursing you with its death stare. So we have to conclude that this painting is definitely haunted. All right, well that was fun and scary. I'm Melissa Milotti, your host. Follow me on Insta and YouTube at Melissa Milotti. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, sus subscribe for good vibes and more videos like this. I hope you have a good day.